You're about to listen to the most informative, persuasive, and inspiring show ever. The James A. Hendricks School of Leadership. Hey guys, welcome. Happy, happy Constitutional Law Thursday. Just so you know, next week there'll be no Constitutional Law Tuesday and Thursday. The week after, we will be covering the Sixth Amendment. Now, many people know that the Fifth Amendment seems well means I don't I, I don't have to incriminate myself. Yes, but. Here's here's the juicy part of the Fifth Amendment that I love. I mean, because I don't think any Americans sit down and read the Constitution in and of itself. I think we listen to what the talking heads in Hollywood tells us that the Fifth Amendment is. Now, let's sit and talk about eminent domain. Uh, no person shall be deprived of life, liberty, or property without due process of law. And no, no government shall take property without just compensation. Now, you may be thinking, well, that's just the federal government. That's just the federal government. Uh, uh, uh. As a conservative federalist, I'm going to preach this here and now, okay? Listen to me. Any state of the union also cannot take property without without just compensation. I mean, there's a there's a huge stack of case law. I wouldn't be surprised that there isn't a law school horn book that deals with that. And I can hear some of you guys, well, Jimmy, you love the law so much. Why don't you go to law school? Well, <laughs> if they had built one in my hometown, I would have returned here and got it done. <laughs> but besides the point. I can love the law and not necessarily be a lawyer. That's the part of public affairs I also love. Now, I haven't decided what the fall uh, public affairs Tuesday Thursday is going to be about. Probably going to be dealing more with rhetoric, so to speak. So get ready with that. Because we're going to study what real rhetoric is Versus what the mainstream media says rhetoric is. Okay, back to the 14th Amendment. Let me give you a hypothetical case. Let's say the governor of Texas decides that they want to purchase a ranch owned by a private company. And, and turn it into something for public use. A park or something like that. Who knows? Now, what if, what if by some magical reasoning, the private owners decide to take the governor to court? Now, I happen to know Governor Abbott is a good governor, okay? I've never met him. But I've had a business associate who has. And I don't think he would deprive people of property. Texas is a property rights state. Okay? So, eminent, eminent domain. We And in Texas, I know Greg Abbott was considering running for the presidency at one point. But I got to say this. We want to keep him as our governor. We love we love Greg Abbott. But okay, let's give another hypothetical example. Tennessee, same thing. 
the private entities take the government to court. Most likely, the thing that's going to be examined in that court, probably the district courts will apply more of the state's law on intimate domain. But as you go through the federal appeals court systems, then uh, you're going to most likely get more of a federal interpretation. Now, granted, it could go through the local courts to the state appeals courts as well. It all depends on what route the owners want to take. Because I'm not saying that everything, every controversy, every matter for controversy should be a federal question. It shouldn't be. Unless it's a federal matter. That's why they call me, that's why I call myself a conservative federalist. I mean, I had a friend the night after my memorial service, he said, you know, asking us, are you all Republican, or aren't you? I vote that way in Texas. Because most of the, most of the people I know in, in, in Texas go by strict conservative principles. Nationally, I don't know. It all depends. But I'm not here to talk politics. I'm here to talk about the Constitution. In fact, let's not park around, fart around. Let's look at what the Constitution actually says. Let's look at it. Let's look at the Constitution instead of just assuming that we know what's in there. That's the thing with the James A. Hendricks School of Leadership. Yeah, I teach about leadership. But I also love talking about the Constitution. And, and you're like, well, why? Because we need to know. We need to know. Okay? We need to know. Now... We're going to see if we can get as far down to the Fifth Amendment as we can. Constitution is a long document, but that don't mean it's a living document. No, uh uh-uh. It's not. Because there are powers, and there there are limits. Okay? Here we go. We're getting down to the amendments. Thank goodness. Now. No person shall be deprived of life, liberty, or property without due process of law. Nor shall private property be taken for public use without just compensation. And you know, some of these liberals they say, "Well, that means the federal government can't can't do that without just compensation." Well, how about every state of the union is under that same banner? Okay. We're trying to make everything a federal case when it shouldn't be. It should be under the banner that the framers designed. They gave powers to the states. 
and powers to the federal government. Okay, so I hope this finds you well tomorrow. We're going to do faith, uh, um, fearless faith rally. Hope you enjoyed. If you like what you hear, please subscribe. Become a part of the James A. Hendrick School Leadership Classroom. Until next time, I want you to keep up your, your hope. Keep up your faith. I want you to keep up your hope. I say this every day when I need to self soothe. Jesus saves and I'm okay. So please put this down in your soul when I say this. Jesus saves and we're all going to be okay. Take care and be properly informed. And remember this, from the bottom of my heart, Jimmy loves you. I really love you. God bless you and have a blessed day.